Hello, boys and girls. Greg from the Scary Spirits Podcast here to make you another cocktail. This week's cocktail is the Honey Bourbon Toddy. And it is the featured cocktail in today's episode. I'm going to start with half a cup of hot water. I'm going to pour that into our glass. Next, we're going to add a half a tablespoon of honey. It's about right. Next, let's stir that up so that the honey dissolves. Next, we're going to add one and a half ounces apple bourbon. One and a half ounces. And we're going to Rim the glass with some lemon and twist it. Put it in there. We're going to stir with a cinnamon stick. And there you have it, boys and girls. The Honey Bourbon Toddy. It's delicious. And it'll cure what ails you, boys and girls. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy the podcast. See ya. Sometimes something checks all the right boxes, but somehow it just doesn't quite come together. And that is definitely the case in this week's episode of the Scary Spirits podcast, Blood Rage. This movie has all the makings of a classic 80s teen slasher movie. Blood and gore? Check. Teenage hormones? Check. 80s fashion? Check. TNA? Check and check. Even some decent acting but all the pieces just don't play well together. Kind of like Greg in grade school. Or maybe that was running with scissors. I can't remember. Anyway, enjoy the 80s flashback. Cheers. Welcome to the Scary Spirits Podcast. Please be advised that the presenters may use adult language and or discuss adult situations. This podcast is not intended for younger listeners or those that may be easily offended. So, if you're ready, let's go. Hi everyone, I'm Greg. Hello, I'm Karen. And welcome to the Scary Spirits Podcast. A podcast that combines the two very different, but highly compatible worlds of scary films and alcoholic spirits. What could possibly go wrong? Indeed. How are you, Karen? Feeling pretty proud of myself, Greg. Really? Yeah. Isn't that one of those, isn't that like a sin or something? <laughs> Well, not that proud. Oh, okay. Just a little. It's like church lady. We like ourselves, don't we, Karen? <laughs> <laughs> well, today, yes. Okay. <laughs> How are Go you, on. Greg? Go on. Oh. Tell us why you're so proud of yourself. Well, I was instrumental in making big things happen this week. You were? Yeah. You don't remember? 
How long have we been doing this podcast? Would you say <laughs> almost two years? Yeah, it'll be on? well. Yeah, it'll be two years, and we're April. heading towards two years. And every podcast. Have you looked up what the two-year anniversary gift is yet, Karen? <laughs> no, I have some time. Okay, go on. I don't Sorry. know if I'll ever top one-year anniversary gifts that I got you. It'll be the same. It'll be the same thing, just a different color. And every podcast that we've done, I make you listen to facts about things, don't I? Well, I get to Karen. Right, <laughs> and I never know. Are these facts really? Oh, yeah, that's right. Probably not very interesting. It's all coming back to me now, Karen. <laughs> but possibly helpful in situations, right? Could, Could be. be. Could be. I mean, you can win bar bets or... Yeah, like if, say, you're, I don't know, at a bar and doing a trivia questionnaire and something trivia, comes up yeah. about a little tidbit that maybe you learned on the podcast about, I don't know, maybe compasses or something. <laughs> yes. And then you win... Your gift of a wife, a free soda drink. <laughs> I mean, what's not to be proud of? Yeah, con congratulations, Karen. I, I couldn't you. have done it without you. Right, exactly. <laughs> I probably was going to win anyway without that one question, but whatever. So you say, but I don't know. I wasn't there. I think okay. that was the one that put you over the top for that free fountain drink. That's all I'm saying. You go with that, Karen. <laughs> so I'm not just talking to the walls. These are useful tidbits of information. Yes, I, I did remember that the Chinese invented the compass. There you I, go. I got a trivia question right at the bar, which led to me winning a fountain drink that my wife will drink the next time we are there. Because <laughs> she's driving, Karen. That's how it should be. <laughs> I don't think anyone will argue with that. Anyway, how are you, Greg? Feeling proud of yourself for winning a fountain drink? I do that every week, Karen. I'm good. Oh. You good? That's good. <laughs> I believe this film was my choice, was it? Was it not? It was. Do you want to tell everyone what you picked? The film I picked is Blood Rage, also known as Nightmare at Shadow Woods, also known as Slasher. Karen, three mm. names from 1987. Remember 1987, Karen? I do after watching this film. It was actually filmed in 83. No. Well, the clothes and the hair and the makeup and yes, all the things was a trip all down memory the lane. Things. Yep. It didn't come out till 87? Correct. And it was filmed in 83? Yep. Is there a reason for that? Well, what do you think, Karen, after watching well, it? <laughs> <laughs> well, beyond the obvious. No, I don't think there was a reason. Did it come out in the theaters or did it go straight to video? It was released in theaters for a short time, hence why it has so many names. I think. So, yeah, it was a limited release theatrically in the United States under the title Nightmare at Shadow Woods. Okay. And then it was later released on VHS as Blood Rage and Slasher, I guess. I don't know. Is there a reason you picked it? The whole thing, I think, takes place on Thanksgiving, right? Yeah, it does. Is it a cult classic or anything? I don't know. I don't. No. So you just did a search for Thanksgiving movies yes. and this came up. Okay. I didn't know if there was some other connection you had that you knew something about it, or maybe you watched it back in the day or. You nope. Know. There are three versions too. Like different scenes are cut from one version or another. So. Oh. But I'm assuming okay. you watched it on Amazon Prime, Karen. I did. Where the title screen said slasher. Did you notice? I didn't even notice because oh, yeah. I searched up. We blood saw rage. the slasher vi version. Oh, okay. Because I searched blood rage and it came up. Did you pick a drink to go with this? Oh, I did, Karen. It's called the honey bourbon toddy. And you picked it because? I did a Google search for Thanksgiving cocktails. And it said this was the perfect after Thanksgiving meal cocktail. So I said, well, that sounds perfect. Well, it is one of your favorites in the winter time, I'd say. Or when I'm feeling icky. Under the weather. <laughs> uh, it's as soon as I feel a cold coming on, it's time to have a toddy, Karen. <laughs> My grandma used to make them. My mom would have them once in a while. I've never had one. It's tasty, though. I can see why you enjoy it. It's delicious. Yeah, it's comforting. 
in a way, because it's a hot drink and it's sort of like tea, but not really. And yeah, there's no tea in this one. I boys and girls, when I make mine, just from you know, scratch, I use chamomile tea because it's it doesn't have any caffeine in it and it helps me sleep. Do that every night. <laughs> would you like to know how to make it, Karen? Uh, we all would, Greg. The honey bourbon toddy. Yes. So my original recipe I found makes two servings. So I, I cut it in half. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that to the end. You know what that reminds me of is when you're in a biology lab and they tell you, read the instructions all the way till the end and then perform the experiment. I don't need which no is sticking instructions. <laughs> and I remember I was dissecting a squid and it said, <laughs> cut a central line down the middle, you know, like sent down. And then I looked at the, that was step one. Step two was be careful to avoid the ink sack. And I looked back <laughs> at my squid. Shit. <laughs> so I had to go and watch the person next to me finish the dissection because ink was everywhere. So I should have learned then as I should have it remind it made me laugh when I read to the end of this and it said divide into two and I was like ah oh, crap. Well, you know what? I'm just going to sleep well tonight. So lay it on them. Tell them how to make it. So for one serving, <laughs> yes. If you want to be a rebel like Karen, you can double this one. Easy enough. We're going to need a half a tablespoon of honey, half a cup of hot water, one and a half ounces bourbon or apple bourbon, a lemon peel, and a cinnamon stick. We're going to stir the honey and the water in a cup until the honey dissolves. We're going to add the bourbon. Then we're going to add a twist of lemon peel over the drink. Then stir with a cinnamon stick and serve. If you don't use apple bourbon like Greg did, which I bet is delicious, but I didn't That's have delicious. it. delicious. You do add extra honey. Mm -hmm. Double so the do honey. Sweet. Yeah, sweeten it up a bit. Using regular bourbon. At the our farmer's market, there's a honey seller. What's the vendor, I guess? And he has all kinds of flavored honey. Lavender, you know, that's the, we got the lavender one. And, there, and my son got a hot honey that when we make wings, mm. he puts it on there. Because I said, what are you going to do with that? And he's like, I'm going to put it on the wings. And I'm like, oh, he's brilliant. So it... If you have something like that, this would be extra tasty too. If you I, had I some. did use local Ohio honey as yes. well, Karen. It would add a touch of flavor like chamomile or, you know, lavender also is supposed to help you sleep where you aren't using even tea. You can just put the honey in. I should have made the whole thing, Karen, because mine is almost <laughs> evaporated. <laughs> you, you should have just gone for it. Well, why don't you give everyone a chance to go make their own and decide? You can go full power like me or half like Greg. <laughs> Hold on. And we're back. Yes, we are. Karen, might you have a brief, possibly a very brief synopsis of this? It is very us? brief, but I love it. I know. I have a feeling we are a match. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Go on. Tell us all the story. When Terry's twin, Todd, escapes from the asylum, it's time for Terry to get out the old machete. <laughs> <laughs> we are a match, Karen. Yes. If you're playing bingo, you get a square. Probably. There was no bingo in this month's newsletter. There was not. I was a little upset. I thought you didn't want it when you made fun of me for putting it in twice in a <laughs> row. You, I thought, well, that's the end as of long, that. As long as it's different. You need different bingo cards, right? Yeah. Mix okay. it up. Speaking of the newsletter, how would you get that, Greg? Well, Karen, you can go to our website, scaryspirits.com, and, and there's a link there to subscribe to our newsletter or... If you wait 15 seconds, there's a pop-up that will pop up saying, hey, subscribe to our newsletter. And if you do it that way, once you enter your email address, another pop-up will come up where there will be a link to download the latest edition of the newsletter right there today. So you don't have to wait. If you got this month's newsletter, it was all about the Day of the Dead. 
and Jamie Lee Curtis. Yes. Very informative, Karen. Very informative. Fascinating stuff. Fascinating. (laughs) Dia de la Mortas or something like that, isn't it? How do you say it? That's pretty close, I think. And we'll go with it. I like the concept of that, honoring your ancestors. Which is November 2nd or something like that? Yes. All right, Karen, tell us everything you loved about this film. Okay. You ready? It's, a, it's long. No. <laughs> um, I like the story. I thought it was an interesting concept. Concept, yeah. I wouldn't say the story, but the concept. Well, the concept, the, the idea yeah. of the story. I liked that the twist was at the beginning. Did you? you well, I mean, <laughs> I, I thought it made it a little interesting. I was not I, expecting that. Yeah, so it was a, a twist that worked. Okay. You know, I mean, it was a surprise. I'll have more to say about it later. <laughs> well, that's in the what we didn't like part. I thought the the guy who played the twins. Mark Soper. Did a really good job. You might have recognized him from Knott's Landing, Karen. Did you watch Knott's Landing? No, I never watched it. No. When you were just a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I was too young. I thought Past he did your a, bedtime. <laughs> a good job of separating the two twins person out that different personalities. I thought he really looked like a different person in each role. I think that might be the acting wasn't, well, some of it was really bad, but he was pretty good. I thought as the main character, if you like gore, it's definitely got gore. It's not great gore, but it's gore. It's very much a slasher teen slasher movie. If that's what you're looking for, I'd say it pretty much checks all those boxes that's all i got you got anything else that's different than that oh wait there was there was some shadow work that i thought was pretty good a little phallic but still pretty good really okay oh we'll get to it (laughs) yeah (laughs) phallic yeah Hmm. surprised i missed that (laughs) i am too usually i'm all over that phallic right (laughs) I wouldn't say I liked it, but I noticed it. <laughs> okay. I agree. The uh, Paul Soper or whatever, I guess that's how you say his name. He was good. He did a good good a job playing two roles, right? And distinguishing between them both so you knew exactly who he was, even without the different clothing, right? Well, right. And, right. You knew exactly who it was immediately. You didn't have to think, oh, did... Terry just t- change clothes and become t- right. You could tell who was who without any hesitation. And at the end, I was kind of thinking, okay, did he change clothes with him in the pool? <laughs> but no, uh, which would have been better. And there are multiple endings I know, that would right? have been better. Yeah. I agree. Uh, it has gore and it's not good gore, but there's gore. There's, there's enough TNA. Check that box. Yes. Yep. To Take care of your appetite for such things. I wouldn't say there's sequel potential, but there kind of is. You could still mess around with it and make another one if you wanted to, I yeah, think. you could. So there was a couple of good shots, and I think maybe once you're talking about shadow work, it's probably one of them. I did like the shot with uh, Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman in her bedroom in the mirror, looking at the pictures of the boys on the wall. I thought that was a good shot, too, but... Do you recognize Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman? I didn't remember that (laughs) that's who that was until you just said it. I knew she was famous. And boys and girls, Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman was like a late night racy soap opera that was on our local. I never watched it. Fox affiliate. I don't know if it was even Fox way back then when we were just little, little babies. Karen. (laughs) Did you watch it? I stayed up late on weekends and. It wasn't very good. I couldn't no, get into I, it. I know what it was, but I'd never watched it. So. I watched it once or twice and I'm like, this is stupid. <laughs> you know, but we didn't have cable TV. Okay, Just something on. to watch. Watch, watch until the, <laughs> what do you call them? The ants on the TV or whatever. Yes, the ant races. After the national anthem, the ant races came on. Yeah, boys and girls. It, like, it wasn't one, that late. 1 or like 2 a.m. I think it was like one thirty or TV 2. TV stopped. Yeah. There was nothing you could do. <laughs> it just stopped. Our broadcast day is over. Anything else you really liked? No, that's pretty much stretching it. 
I, I agree. The, the, it had potential. The, story. the story's interesting. And the twist at the beginning made it even more interesting, I thought. Well, potentially. What didn't you like, Karen? I hated the Anything. mother character. Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman? I thought she was horrible. I don't know. I couldn't figure out if she was too good of an actress for the film. Mm-hmm. Or if she was just written so poorly, I, I couldn't, I think she was too good for the film. Like it I was think too, so too. And she was so. She, and she overplayed it because she feared that was the only way to do it. Yes. So I, I hated her character more for that reason, but also the weak mother. I never can get on board with that. And she was horribly weak and just ineffective in so many ways. So I didn't like that. As much as I keep saying I like the story, like you said, I like the idea, but the overall story was random and just not cohesive and just here's some gore, here's some gore, here's some gore, here's some gore. And then it got a little more personal and chasey and, you know, that kind of stuff. But <laughs> it was just not, it, it was not interesting. You didn't really get to much character development before people were killed. So you didn't really like any of them. You didn't care that they were killed. The rest of the characters that were being killed were not necessarily likable either. I liked Greg. And I liked Karen. <laughs> it's too bad they didn't end up walking together. And we could say, there's Greg and Karen. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it had a very small budget. So, you know. The gore, like we said, wasn't good. A couple of times people are supposed to be dead. They're breathing. You can see it, even for very short shots. Some of it was okay, but uh, yeah, I mean, it was not. The ones you expected to be not were not. Right. right. If there's a decapitation, it's not going to be good. <laughs> then if you're split in half, that's not going to be good either. No. I guess that's kind of it. I mean, I think, I think at the end of the movie... I think if the one brother who survived had taken on the characteristics or just taken over the life of the one that didn't and kept going, because all that happens at the end is there's a bunch of killing and you hear the police in the distance and the one kid's yelling, I'm Todd, I'm Todd, I'm Todd. And I'm like, no, be Terry now, <laughs> because all of this stuff that's happened you blame on todd and then you just keep going in the life that terry had before it all happened yeah good point you know like i or everyone... if like i said or if like i said terry would have like in when they were fighting each other in the pool he would have been able to like change right. shirts <laughs> right <laughs> that's still... how, especially when their hair is wet you know that's the best way to tell them apart because their hair is different yes throughout the whole film is styled but everybody's gone who would have known except for karen and she wouldn't have said anything she would have known no she knew todd survived she was there she only right. left but when I'm, the mother but i'm saying if they would have switched shirts well that's your ending i'm talking yes. about mine okay where they could have just gone on and we don't know if that happened or not but it didn't look like it did no, from it the didn't. ending it looked like he was just going to go back to the asylum, blamed for all the killing again. Poss possibly, yeah. Well, if he says he's Todd, that's what's going to happen. I thought about that. But... So now he's going to repeat what already happened. So in the end, Terry won again. All right, you're right. And I'm like, I, that's just not a satisfying ending for me. I didn't like that. That's one thing I didn't like. He could have just taken over the personality. He and Karen raised the baby. You know, and everybody's happy because. But Karen could have told authorities that no. But who's going to. Terry but, was the bad but if he, guy. He takes over Terry. He gets all the moms. Like everything just seamlessly goes. Karen, I'm sure Terry's fingerprints are all over all those murder weapons. <laughs> but they're identical twins. Are there? Oh. Finger... Yeah, they're. Yeah. And. Well, aren't their fingerprints no, the same? They wouldn't be the same. Are Dr. Sure? Karen, come on. Is their DNA the same? Pretty close. Pretty close. Let me see. Fingerprints, I guarantee, are not the same. Identical twins all have unique fingerprints due to environmental factors. Okay. 
in the womb. Okay. Well, that may, you're right. That makes sense. But still it's, I don't think they, I think they would have just believed him. Then he if could he, get rid he, of all, all the weapons were Terry. in a pile. Is that what you're saying? If he yes. said he was Terry. Okay. And especially in movie land, we would be like, and he could have just turned and looked at the camera, but I like yours better where they switch up somehow. And where then Todd switches up with Terry and well, or Terry switches with Terry, makes Todd. Switch. Terry ends up getting killed or Todd ends up getting killed. Yeah. And then Terry acts like it was Todd the whole time mm-hmm. and walks away. That's more sinister than mine yes. where Todd just takes over and, <laughs> you know, but Shocking nobody, that I would have this more sinister ending. But nobody knows that Terry was the bad guy except Karen at Karen. the end. She's the only one surviving that knows. Right. Her and the anyway, baby. I would say the ending is disappointing. I did not like seeing the twist in the beginning. You didn't? No, I did not at all. I'm like, well, fuck there. That ruined. Okay. There you go. <laughs> That's the movie. <laughs> right? Because after that, you know. You know what's going to happen the whole rest of the time. Until what could have been a good twist at the end. But they That's didn't. where they missed, they dropped the ball. I could have done without the twist at the beginning or a twist at the end. Take one out and add one. I don't, I don't, you know what I mean? Yeah, it doesn't matter who's in the asylum. He could have escaped and started the rampage anyway. And, they, and the story would have essentially been the same because they didn't know who was who and all. I mean, it affects the mother a little more and stuff like that. So I think we were supposed to interact with it on also on a psychological level. And I just think they didn't really make that happen. We were supposed to understand what the mother was going through with all the psychology and he's majoring in psychology and all this stuff. And I just didn't didn't see that. It didn't come through. I thought at the twist at the beginning, I thought he was smart to get out of it. I suppose. In a psychotic kind of way. Acting wasn't good, except for Mark Soper. I guess Louise Lasser, who played the mom and Mary No, I thought it was terrible. She was terrible. I wanted to like Karen. I really did. That's how it always is. I I just looked her up and she only did like four films. And this was her second. I was I was really hoping that she had potential, but she wasn't gr- that great of an actress. No, but she wasn't outplayed by anybody else in the movie. No, nope, except for it's true. I mean, you didn't go, "Wow, she's really horrible." No, it's true. You're you're right. And on the Wikipedia page, like ninety percent of them don't have their own pages, right? <laughs> Only Louise Lasser, Mark Soper. For some reason, the guy who played Bill does. Because he was a makeup artist. He's more known for a makeup artist than being in this film. Hmm. Oh, he's got a small role. And Ted Raimi. Of course, Ted Raimi has. Do you recognize Ted Raimi? Which one was he? He was very early in. He was in the bathroom of the drive-in selling condoms. (laughs) Oh, no, I didn't recognize him. Yeah, Ted Raimi. It's funny. From Evil Dead. Well, his... Sam, his brother Sam, you know, did Evil Dead. Right. He he was in it. He kind of was the evil thing in <laughs> Evil Dead. But and he's you know gone on to do directing and acting and all kinds of things. But this was his first film. I won't say that I liked or disliked the fashion and the hair, but I will say it was accurate for the time. I mean, they were making it in the time, obviously, but it brought back some horrific memories. <laughs> Of things we used to wear. That was pretty funny. I didn't think it was horrific at all. And the hair, the woman, the women's hair was. I love the women's makeup with the eyeliner and all that stuff. (laughs) And the hair. I thought it was great. Fashion wise. It's funny. (laughs) Just looking at it and going, oh. All right. Anything else you didn't like? No, I don't think so. Okay, Karen. What? I'm, I'm writing a number down. What cocktail rating do you want to give this num- this picture? It's not a good movie, but it's not a movie that isn't what you expect it to be. So I think it's a four. I agree. That's why I, I wrote it, down. If you watch this movie, you're <laughs> going to get exactly what you think it is. It's an 80s slasher movie. There's it nothing is. overly unique. This, 
the concept is a little unique, but it's like I said, it checks all the boxes. That's your groove that you're going to mm-hmm. like it. It's got just a hair more character development than your average Friday the 13th film, right? Um, not on everyone though. I mean, no, but the, on Friday the 13th, you kind and even any of the you kind of were like, oh, bummer, you know, Kevin Bacon got axed or whatever. Like you have a little bit of a you kind of know them a little bit. They interact with each other a little bit. These guys, it's I don't know. They interact. I didn't think, barely they sex. They play Atari. <laughs> True. No one's very likable. We have a final girl, a final True. girl and a baby. All right. Four cocktails. So Karen, I'll, I'll tell you it has a 5.8 out of 10 on IMDb, a 53% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes. But what do you think Google users think of this film, Karen? <laughs> Google users are always high. I'm going to say it's 65. 94%. Karen. Wow. But see, I think they know what they want. I think Google users (laughs) rate it as what they were expecting it to be. I think they go in going, I'm watching a 80s teen slasher movie. This one is excellent for that genre. I don't think they're grading it on whether it was really good or not. It's whether it was what they wanted it to be. I do not have a review of the time, Karen, but I do have a review from its streaming debut. No, it's Blu-ray and DVD release. Oh, when was that? 2015. Well, we'll take it for Critics Corner. What do you got? So this is from a website called The Independent Critic. And of course, he gives his name, Richard Propes. So I'll paraphrase this one. It's hard to believe that director John Grismer's Blood Rage was released in 1987 until you begin watching it and begin hearing those familiar 80s synths and then come face to face with the former Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman star Louise Lasser, along with 80s retro styled gruesome special effects courtesy of Ed French. The film was actually shot in 1983 and released in 1987, most definitely an indicator of its comfortable status as a B-movie on the lower end of the B-movie spectrum. Everything that unfolds in Blood Rage is predictable. I'm not the most abstract thinker in the world, and I had it all figured out within five to ten minutes or so. (laughs) However, that doesn't mean that it's still not an awful lot of fun. I mean, seriously. Who watches slasher flicks for the storyline anyway? (laughs) If all you need from your slasher flick is some good old-fashioned gore and TNA, there is enough here to please most fans. And as I said, this is a review of the Blu-ray and DVD, so it had extras. He goes on to say, The video's extras are done about as well as possible for an originally VHS-released film. While I'd put this film on the lower end of Arrow releases, that was the company who released it. Fans of the genre or fans of the film will most likely consider it worth the time. Yeah, he's right. Well, I have another review from 2011, oh. which is actually a VH of the review of the VHS film. But let me just say, he's right. It checks all the boxes and the synth music is horrible. <laughs> I forgot about that. But yes, I mentioned it in my notes that it's horrible. And this review is from Outlaw Vern, and I'm not going to read it. Because it, it's a long one, but it's a good one. But he basically compares it to Halloween. And there is a lot of similarities once, when, once he's reading it. He says, so it's the opening of Halloween where a little boy snaps and commits murder out of the blue, except it's at a drive-in instead of at a house. It's his mom having sex instead of his sister. Instead of sneaking up on the sister, he sneaks out of the car and kills a stranger and so on and so forth. And there's even the doctor, you know, looking for him later and... I mean, it's so a good, what's the order? Which one comparison. came out? Oh, Halloween was first. First, okay. But yeah. this was filmed in 83. So yes. was that yes. how close? Okay. When was Halloween? 70? 79, I think. 79. We've gone over this, Karen. I know. I'm sorry. Dates aren't my my forte. 78. Okay. And I never get it right. Every time we go over it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty good, but it, it's long and... 
I'd have to read the whole thing to do it justice because he goes into the that would have been a great paper for Dr. Craig's class. Yes. A compare and contrast. Yes, yes. <laughs> that would have been a great paper for Dr. Craig. So boys and girls, any of you out there at Appalachian State who are taking Dr. Craig's class, look up <laughs> Outlaw Vern and Blood Rage. If you need a compare and contrast. Yes. Between Blood Rage and Halloween. Just for inspiration. Yeah. Don't plagiarize because <laughs> I'm sure Dr. Craig listens. He'll know exactly what you're doing. Right. <laughs> All right, Karen, are you ready to get into it? Let's tell him about this winner. It's actually not terrible. You should listen to the end. Blood Rage from 1987, also known as Nightmare at Shadow Woods, which is the apartment complex name we see later. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and also known as Slasher. And if you watch it on Amazon Prime, that is likely the version you will be watching. Slasher. Rated R, Karen. That's the only warning we got that I could see. It's 1974, Karen. Film opens at a drive-in theater showing a movie called The House That Cried Murder. Which is a real movie. I know. It was by the guy who did this movie. That was his oh, first is movie. It? <laughs> yes. Oh, I didn't put that together, he's, but he's it is a movie. giving himself a little promo. <laughs> From 1973, limited release, about a new bride with a weird customized home, and she uses it to punish her husband and his girlfriend. Mm. It's PG. Okay. Is that what it's, did it say that on the thing? No. On I'm, the sign? The marquee? No, I looked it up. Okay. November 7th, 1973, it debuted. And we're in Jacksonville, Florida, had a drive-in, Karen. No, I didn't know that. Words to read on the screen. That's what it says. Oh, I just saw it said 1974. Nope. Then it said Jacksonville, Florida. Oh, I stopped watching. (laughs) (laughs) You were looking up the house that cried murder. I was, and it said rated R on the marquee, but my notes said PG. So interesting. Hmm. And we're at a drive-in. And yes, we've all been at the drive-in. It was on Highway 28. And no, I was not in the trunk. (laughs) Well, boys and girls the out there may not may not have never been to a drive-in, Karen. It's true. We were when we were babies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's intermission at the drive-in. Let's yeah. all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Yes. <laughs> and we're seeing credits as scenes play out there in the lobby of the drive-in. And then we see Ted Ramey. A guy goes to the bathroom and Ted Ramey's in there. Does the guy take his fucking popcorn into the bathroom with him? Yes, he buys popcorn <laughs> and then he goes in to use the urinal. That just I just realized that. I was like, oh, that's not a good move at the drive-in. No. It's not a good move anytime, anytime but it's not no. a good dream. I don't even no. I set my tea outside the bathroom when I before I go in into work, but whatever. Enough about me. And we see Ted Ramey in the bathroom selling condoms, Karen. I guess this is before they had the uh, coin-operated condom machines. <laughs> I don't know, or he's selling them cheaper. I don't. He's selling them for a dollar, though. Yeah, with the uh, with the aftershave and the the, the smell good, <laughs> so you can get a, a spritz of Dracar Noir <laughs> in the bathroom. I don't know. I was never in the men's bathroom. <laughs> I know, but that's the way it was. And right here I wrote, they're not really dressed like 1974. They look more like 1983. Right. Right? Yes. Especially him. Not that I would remember 1974, Karen, but. He's in an 80s outfit for sure. Hat and a vest. For sure. Yeah. Well, so is the guy. He's wearing like a sleeveless. Yeah. He looked like a football player kind of guy. Yeah. Had his whole hair all like. Mulleted. Feathered and all. Yeah. It was definitely not 1970. Four. Then we cut to a bunch of couples kissy facing in the drive-in because apparently that's what you do. I was much too young. I don't know. You see some kids smoking, but lots of kissing in different cars. Then we see who we learn is Maddie, right? Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman. I just called her the mom. When they zoomed in on her, I, she, oh my God, she looks about 40. I hope she's not supposed <laughs> to be a teenager. Because she had a ridiculous hairdo. Like she was trying to look young, but she didn't look young. I was—I no. thought at first they were going to put no, her as 
<laughs> as a teenager and I was going to be really mad because I thought this is ridiculous, but she's not. She's a mom it is. at and the this drive-in. Is, this is post Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman, like Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman was more 70s. This is 80s, right? I mean, she looks fine. She just doesn't look like a teenager. And they dressed her and did her hair ridiculously. But And she's kissy facing with her date, but she's worried about the boys in the back of the station wagon. She has twin boys. Look back and they're asleep and, you know, her date, you know, wants to be romantic, (laughs) I guess. And then we see the boys sneak out of the car while they're kissy facing, right? Yeah. One of them says, mom's at it again. And then one of them finds a hatchet in the back of a pickup truck as they're roaming the drive in. Yeah. Now, when they climbed out of the car, I think it was a station wagon. It was. They opened the back hatch. The light came on. You saw it. Oh, did it? And the mom doesn't even notice. I didn't notice the light. I did notice they did not shut the door, which have made a would have made noise. Yes, but the light came on. But she didn't even notice they were gone. Then we see the guy. I think it's the guy we saw in the bathroom earlier, right? Yes. With a girl. Naked. They're naked. Being romantic. Yes. Naked romantic. And we see one bare breast, Karen. And the boy hits the guy in the head with his hatchet. Many times. Right where his eyeball is. And then the girl runs out of the car naked. And we see her butt as she's running away. He's smiling while he's hatcheting the guy, too. And there's lots of blood. Like, it's the first gore thing. There's blood all over. There's splatter. There's a little splatter. It's gory. And then Maddie, back in the station wagon, realizes the boys are missing. And then we see the killer boy. Here's what I wrote. Killer boy smears the other boy with blood and puts the hatchet in his hand and yells for mom. And I right there wearing tube socks and shorty shorts, which is, remember, tube socks, the stripes at the top. Vaguely. <laughs> so right there, the whole movie's, there's your. The twist. So the kid who's doing the killing, the other kid is just standing there basically in shock. Yeah, that his brother is doing this. And I thought I thought the kids were OK. I thought the kid acting, I should have mentioned a little. I forgot about it. But the one yeah. looks like a psycho and the other one looks completely in shock. They were twins. Yes, twin it was boys. twin boys. So I thought they did a good job. They were good actors. Yeah. Ten years later, Karen. Yeah, we don't really see anything happen. Like after that, it just ten years later. And we see Maddie driving. And right here I wrote, Maddie must smoke cigarettes. Yes. <laughs> she sounds like Marge Simpson's. Is it her sisters that's that talk like yeah. that? Yeah, but it's more her teeth is what I noticed. Oh, it's her voice that I noticed. Her yellow teeth. She was very gravelly. So Maddie goes to the doctor where Todd is institutionalized, goes to see the doctor. Doctor tells her that Todd has begun remembering what happened 10 years ago, and he begins to place suspicion on Terry. And Maddie can't believe it. Says, well, that's just crazy. It's kind of a voiceover where they're showing the doctor meeting the the mom, and she's going over her notes, reading them as we're... Uh, like, Like she was reciting her notes into a tape recorder or something. Yes, yes. But yeah, Todd is starting to implicate his brother, Terry, and mom doesn't believe it. And right here, I go, we already know Terry committed the murder. (laughs) We know. We do, but she doesn't. And she just starts screaming, no more tests. Like she overacts, no more tests. She's very dramatic through this whole movie. And then Maddie meets Todd because the doctor wants to see them interact or whatever and gives Todd his pumpkin pie that she always does on around Thanksgiving or whatever. And he flips out and throws it against the wall in the doctor's office. And he well, says he, he never wants killed it up, anybody. Wads it up in his hands and it's really gross. And then he throws it against the wall and he wants to leave. And the doctor says that Maddie treats Todd like a child. So then we cut to Terry, the other twin, and other kids, I wrote, but they're they're young adults. They're in college. Yeah, so at least they're not trying to pass them off as no, teenagers. that's true. They're college students playing yes. football. Tag football. Yep. And then they meet the new neighbor jogging by with her mom, and 
in very interesting outfits, very 80s outfits. And the one, the younger girl is running, jogging without a bra. <laughs> I, I made a note of that, Karen. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Not recommended. I didn't think it was funny. I laughed. <laughs> I'm like, that is not not good form. It's not good for you to do But the that. mom tells, says, hey, you must be Terry. Your mom invited us to Thanksgiving. Whatever. We'll see you later. And then we see the daughter, Andrea, who's not wearing a bra, jogging. And he seems interested in her. Yes. To the chagrin of Karen. Terry and Karen were kissing during the game. So, yeah. so we kind of get the feeling they're boyfriend, girlfriend. Greg and I are both so excited that you're listening to the Scary Spirits podcast, and we would love to hear from you. Do you have a movie suggestion for us? Or possibly a favorite drink you'd like us to try? Or maybe you just want to say hi. If so, you can email us at info at scaryspirits.com. Thank you so much for your support. Now back to the show. So then we cut to Thanksgiving dinner, and Maddie announces at Thanksgiving that she and boyfriend Brad are going to get married. I said her hair and her dress really bother me. <laughs> so yes, they're getting married. And at first, Terry's reaction was not happy, but then he composes himself and acts happy. And he makes a toast to the new family with his glass of milk. <laughs> yes, he makes it very clear multiple times in the movie that he doesn't drink, but I don't know why. I don't either. That kind of went nowhere. And then I wrote, new dad carves the turkey. I couldn't figure out if that was Karen there with him. So at the table is the mother, the fiance, Terry, Karen, the neighbor mo mom, and Andrea. Andrea. Yeah. Yes, they're all there. Then the phone rings. Maddie goes in the kitchen to get it, and she closes the shutters, the indoor shutters. shutters. <laughs> yes. And then um, Terry begins flirting with the neighbor girl, Andrea, and Karen gets upset. So then mom tells Terry that Todd has escaped. Yeah, they're in the kitchen alone. And that they think he is coming to the house, the authorities do. She says, Terry, not to tell anyone at Thanksgiving, right? Yeah, let's just pretend that never happened. But he goes right out there and tells everybody. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> Looks like you'll get to meet the whole family. It'll be a family reunion. Todd's escaped. He's the coming. crazy Todd's coming, and so are the doctors. The mom says the doctor's coming to look for him, too. And then we see Todd walking past the pick and save. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have pick and saves here. Must be a Florida thing. And then we cut to Maddie. In her bedroom, looking at photos of the boys on the wall. And this is the shot where we see her reflection in the mirror. And she's looking at the wall with the boys' pictures. And Yeah, they're cleaning up in the kitchen. And Brad says, you know, you've done a ton. Let us I'm, finish cleaning yeah. up. You go rest. Time to get off your feet, is what he mm -hmm. says. <laughs> so then Brad comes in and starts kissy-facing on her. And, and Terry sees them, of course. And she says no, and then he kisses her again, and then she says no, and then he kisses her again. And this is where it's one of those annoying things that we didn't notice back then, but she used to say no like five times to him to get him to stop kissing on her. I mean, nobody, she's obviously concerned that Todd is coming back because he brutally murdered someone in a drive in theater. No one else seems all that concerned. They're just cleaning up. Terry, we know why he's not concerned, but Brad's like, oh, I'll just handle it if he shows up. <laughs> like, and even the kids later, oh, I can take him. It's no big deal. Like, They're young and dumb and bulletproof, Karen. That's what kids are. Brad's not her fiance. He just says, I'll well, be here know. if he shows Apparently up. Apparently he's the apartment manager. He's, he's, he's got power. <laughs> it's just, I'll stay here with you. I'll keep you safe. And then immediately he leaves. So then there's a knock at the door and it's the doctor and some other guy. Her assistant. Jackie is his name, I think. And he pulls the tranquilizer gun on Terry because he's not sure it's Terry or Todd. But the doctor says, no, that's Terry. And he says, we're looking for Todd. And then the new dad, Brad, comes out and takes control because he's the, apparently the manager, like I said, of the apartment complex. And he says, my office is over there. And 
he gives them the lay of the land, tells them where the woods are and all about the patios and whatever. Yeah, and he'll be in room 137. 37, his office. Which he just told Maddie that he would stay with her and keep her safe. And then as soon as the doctor arrives, he leaves and says, I'll be in 137. He could have been with her. There's no reason for him not to be there. True. So then the doctor and Jackie split up to look for Todd. One of them goes, the doctor goes in the wood and Todd's like going behind the apartment complex, checking all the patios and whatnot. And we see Brad, the new dad, listening to a religious radio station. Yes. In his office. He calls Maddie and tells her everything will be okay. She's we, taking drugs at that point to go to sleep. And then we see Terry coming up behind him outside the sliding glass doors. and Which aren't even closed. Nope. There's a murderer. It's Jacksonville, Florida, Karen. No, there's a murderer, <laughs> potentially. Probably in their gators midst. down there, too. And he's got his back to the sliding door, and it's completely open. He does pull a gun from his drawer and drinks an old-style beer. Yes, he does. You want to know about old-style beer? I would love to know about old-style beer. <laughs> I was wondering, is that a Florida thing, Karen? It's originally called Golden Leaf, and it was bought by a man with the name of Heileman, which changed the beer name to Old Times Lager and then finally changed it to Old Style in 1902. And it's remained old style ever since. It's known for double fermentation process that is typical of bottle fermented beers, but it says their process gives their lager extra carbonation and complex richness. Old Style had a sponsorship deal in 1950 with the Chicago Cubs, making it the beer choice at Wrigley Field in the 1970s. Okay. So a lot of people think it's Chicago, it's called Chicago's beer because of that, but it's brewed in Wisconsin, I think. Okay. And they did have six huge towers of the beer that held their held the, their product and it was called the largest six pack in the world. Gotcha. Paint, you know, painted in the mm -hmm. old style beer thing. So I don't know. He just liked so old six somebody large had fermenters probably painted yeah. looked like a can. Yeah. Okay. World's largest six pack. But then Terry comes up behind him, Karen. With his machete and cuts off his hand with the beer in it. And it spurts. So you want to know why and it spurts? What artery Badly. he probably cut? <laughs> yes, it's terrible. But what artery he probably chopped was the, radi the radio. The radial artery. What people always do when they slit their wrist. <laughs> well, it's the one that you feel when you want to feel a pulse. That's yeah. the one. It's called a radial artery. It comes from the brachial artery and travels across the front of the elbow. In the forearm, it travels deep under muscle until it comes closer to the skin surface near the wrist. You can feel the pulse of the radial artery just under the skin on the thumb side of the wrist. But that was probably what was supposed to be spurting badly in that shot. He gone. He's going to bleed out. Yep. And right here I wrote, I think Nike must have sponsored this film. Everyone's wearing Nike shoes and clothes. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Then we see Maddie on the floor in the kitchen eating leftovers, Karen. <laughs> With the refrigerator door open and she's eating mac and cheese and green She's beans. just sticking her hands in it and it's just, eating it, right? Again, overly dramatic. She starts cleaning to try to make herself feel better too. And there's a lot of, to keep busy so she doesn't think yes. about it. So then we cut to the doctor in the woods looking for Todd. In her heels. And she matches her clothes <laughs> match from head, neck to toe. All that light blue. Shoes, too. And, well, she's a doctor, Karen. <laughs> so then Terry approaches her with a machete, and she just stands there, I wrote. <laughs> ah, Waits for him to come of, at her. I thought she was going to stay around longer, because she's the one who was kind of figuring out what was going on. So I thought maybe at the end she would be the one who would... Kind well, of she's got to go first, Karen. She's got to go early. She knows. Yeah, but that she, I thought she might be the final girl because she's the one who could explain it all. But she, yeah, she's, we don't see anything happen right then. Is that where we just hear the swish of the sword? Yeah. 
Machete, sorry. We cut back to Maddie trying to make a phone call while pouring wine. And we cut back to the doctor and she cut in two, Karen. Slice in half. And it's not good either. No, it's not. So I'm going to get dinged on my computer because I typed in, how long do you last if you're cut in two? <laughs> and it was a wide variety of answers. So I have no idea, but not long. But she she was kind of acting longer than I thought you should if you were cut in half. But I don't know. <laughs> That's why I looked it up. And then later I looked up machete because I was trying to see if there was anything interesting there, which I didn't really find anything. I'm like, those are two great things for me to have looked up on the same <laughs> night on my commu- computer. So I was ting, ting, but whatever. She went on for a while with her two parts separated. I get while. that it's it's gore and we're supposed to be shocked by it, but. Then we see Todd walking past Shadow Woods Apartments sign. So that's where we get the, the second title. And then we see Terry showering with his underwear on, Karen. Did you notice that he had Yes, I did. <laughs> I said that would never happen if it was a woman. And we soon find out later. And Maddie is cleaning the stove frantically. And then we see Wait. Maddie trying to call Brad again. Wait, did you skip the assistant getting killed? She's on the patio, offers a joint to Terry. Terry stabs him. I guess I did. Oh, yeah, I did. I have it written here, but I skipped it. Yeah, at one point, while Doctor and the Jackie are looking for Todd, Jackie, we see Jackie lighting a joint. Terry arrives. Terry takes a hit from the joint and then puts a machete through Jackie. He gone. Yeah, so <laughs> the assistant's telling, he, he blabs that the doctor thinks that Todd didn't kill anyone. I think he thinks that Terry is Todd. Maybe. I don't know. It's It was weird. But yeah, he, so he sticks the machete through the assistant. What's his name? Jackie. Mm-hmm. And you can see in his jacket or whatever, a hole separate from where the machete goes through where the blood splurts out. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Uh, I didn't notice. Yeah. So then eventually Terry goes to see the new neighbor, Andrea, because she said she was going to be babysitting, right? Right. At dinner. So he just... And he said he would come see her. And she likes to party, Karen. That's what we know about Andrea. She likes to party. Yes. And not wear bras. She's like, do you want vodka and tomato juice or tomato juice and vodka? And he says again, he doesn't drink. Yep, just tomato juice. He's majoring in psychology and she majors in partying. She's so cool. (laughs) (laughs) She wants to start making out, but he just wants to watch TV. I did say she looks a lot older than him. Well, she likes to party, Karen. <laughs> yeah, she's she's staying in school a little longer. She's on the six-year plan. And then we see Karen, the girlfriend, right, goes to see Terry. He doesn't answer the door, so she goes around back, and Todd startles her, but she thinks it's Terry, and she thinks he's high because he's very quiet. Yeah, and no one closes their curtains in this movie. And she says she wants... Terry to make love to her. He's she's ready to make take the next step, Karen. Apparently. And Todd tells her, I'm Todd. And he says he's never kissed a girl before, and she runs away. <laughs> so Karen runs to her car, and then the other boys pull up, and she tells them that Todd is there and explains who who he is because they weren't know, Art, at dinner. Artie says, Well, I'll go get him. I'll take care of him. And Greg stays with Karen in the car, right? I don't know. One of them leaves with a baseball bat. Yeah. Even though it's the crazy murderous Todd that he's going after. He's like, I can take him. It just takes a bat with him. So then we see Terry and Andrea watching a horror film. And actually, I believe it's the house that cried murder they're watching. (laughs) That's what it kind of looked like. Yeah. And the mom comes home from her date. Right, but Andrea is trying to get Terry to make out with her. He's, she's leaning on him. She's a little frustrated. She starts putting her hand on his close to his crotch, I guess, or whatever. And he's not really interested, so I don't really know what he's doing there. But then the the people on the date come back in. The mom comes in, and she's yeah. got real eighties hair. That girl, 
her date pays the babysitter her ten dollars for babysitting. Yes. <laughs> and then Andrea and Terry leave. Andrea says, "Let's go back to my place and have a party." Right again. Then I guess they run into the other kids. Karen tells Terry that she saw Todd, and then Terry goes to look for Todd, and the others go off to Andrea's apartment to party. We do get a cut in there where the mom is drinking wine and vacuuming, I think. I'm sure we do. <laughs> and says, and Terry shows up and scares her because she can't hear him because she's vacuuming and says, Todd's back. Terry tells her he thinks the doctor has left and he doesn't know anything about Brad. Maddie tries to call him again on the phone. He's just down the freaking. <laughs> I know that was driving me crazy. <laughs> He's in the same apartment complex. He's two doors down. Just go. That's why I'm so frustrated yeah, by it. But before we go any further, she's on a rotary phone calling and calling and calling. And at one point, she even calls the operator to make sure his line still works. And yes, he's like two doors down. But do you know there are two letters that are not on a rotary phone? Did we talk about this before? No, but I know one of them. Q what? is one of them. Q is one of them. They used to use letters. It in the numbers so yeah. my so my aunt i still remember yes, one of yes, my aunt's you, numbers you've, you've told us all here yeah so <laughs> the it's q and z but they were left off because they look too similar to zero and two so q and z okay. are the ones that aren't on there but she dials that phone a thousand times in this movie todd finds the doctor who's cut in two at the waist not down the middle and he takes the gun from her purse. He also puts her back together, kind of. He kind of tries to. Respectfully. It looks like a toy gun that he takes out. It though. does. It's not a very good prop gun, is it? So then a little girl comes along looking for her pussy. <laughs> her kitty, she calls it. Her kitty, okay. And Todd, Todd warns her that she should go home because there's a bad person around and she should not open the door for anyone, no matter what they say. <laughs> he is nice to her. He says, you know, cats have a way of finding their way back home. So go home and lock your door and don't let anyone in. He's kind to her, actually. He is. So we're seeing here that Todd's a nice kid. So then we see Andrea teaching Karen how to drink tequila. I said Andrea <laughs> looks about 40 also. No, but she K doesn't. Karen's like, ooh, it's gross. Because they're 40. doing shots where you put the salt on your hand, lick the salt, drink the shot, suck on the lemon. And the boys are playing Atari. And Andrea smokes a Marlboro. And we have more Nike clothing, I wrote. I wrote there's big 80s hair in this. <laughs> and then at one point, Karen jumps down on the Atari and Greg starts messing with Andrea and they go off together. Yes. So then we cut back to the mom who came home from her date where Andrea was babysitting, right? And she's trying to seduce her date for the night. Yeah, she's trying to get him drunk with all these liqueurs, <laughs> like coconut liqueur. and Yeah. Ooh, I've never had coconut liqueur before. <laughs> Fancy. <laughs> <laughs> so she goes, she's, I'm going to go slip into something more comfortable. That used to be a line. Do people still say that? I don't know. Do they? Used to be a lot in movies and, <laughs> and TV shows. Let me go slip into something more comfortable, which is not more comfortable because they get into <laughs> lingerie. That is not more comfortable. More comfortable with sweatpants. <laughs> <laughs> then the doorbell rings while she's in her bedroom there and her date answers it and it's Terry. And right here I wrote, why does mom have a do not disturb sign on her doorknob in her apartment? <laughs> Where the Did you notice that? It, there was something on there. I think it's one of the people used to put signs on the door that said, be quiet, baby sleeping. It's a do not disturb. Oh, did it? Oh, yes. I didn't know. I just, I noticed the sign. I thought it was a lot of times people would put them on their front doors that said baby sleeping, don't ring bell or something like that. But so then she puts on a teddy. Right. Is that what that is, Karen? A teddy? I think, yeah, that's what you'd call it. <laughs> and she comes out. And I just said, every woman in this movie is horny. That's 1983, Karen. There's a knock at the door. 
she looks out and she says so something. So when she comes like, up, well, why are you com- out there or something? Yeah, because when she comes into the living room or whatever you'd call it in her lingerie, Bill isn't there anymore. So she's wondering if he left, but she hears something outside the door. So she opens it because she looks through the peephole and sees him out there. Right. His head. Yes. <laughs> she opens the door and we see Bill's decapitated head hanging there. But it was, yeah, it was peephole level. So she thought he was just outside. And then her baby's crying. Yeah. And she's freaking out. And she goes to put a coat on because she's in lingerie. And Terry helps her put the coat on. And I said, is he really going to kill a baby mama in this thing? I was surprised by that. You know, that's not something that I expected to happen. Well, we don't know if it's going to happen yet. Right. We don't know. So then we cut back to Todd and he breaks into the apartment. His parents, his mom's apartment. Right. And he goes in, I guess, Terry's room. And I wrote there's a Yoda head in there. And a lot of trophies. (laughs) And some more Nikes. (laughs) And skulls, too, everywhere. And shag green carpet. Yep. And Maddie passes out in the hallway. And we cut to Terry and he's watching the other kids. His buddies. Yeah. And we cut to Terry and he's watching his friends through the sliding glass door in the other Andrea's apartment, I guess. Yes, because no one closes their window or their drapes. Then Terry goes to, back to his apartment. No, Todd's Todd. in the apartment, is back in the apartment and picks up his mom and puts her in yeah. bed. So Maddie asks if they found Todd and Todd says not yet. And then she asks Todd for a kiss. Yeah, I feel like through this whole thing, her relationship feels inappropriate with Terry and with Todd. Like, it gives me ew vibes. Why, because he she kisses wants her on the lips? Yes, and for too long. You don't kiss your mother like that. I did notice his the way he put his hands on her waist. That's what I noticed. <laughs> but <laughs> It's just all inappropriate. So then we see... And it's not just that one moment. It's through the film it feels inappropriate. So then we see Karen and I guess it's Artie. Yeah, playing Atari. Yes, because Andrea has left with Greg. Yeah, and they hear a scream. They go into the bedroom and find Andrea on, on the bed under a romantics poster, Karen. <laughs> yes, I have information about the romantics. Do you? Yes, they were an American band formed in 1977 in Detroit. They are often put under the banner of Power Pop and New Wave. So mm-hmm. would you call them I would say a New Wave. One hit wonder? Because really they had two. So they, they had, are they had several, actually. They had two. The foursome is <laughs> in the rare group of two hit wonders, better than one hit wonders, but just shy of stringing a, a few hits together. Do you remember what the two hits, their two biggest hits were? What I like about you? Yes. And um that's from 1980. Right. And uh uh I don't know what the song's called exactly, but it's about the whispers in your oh, sleep. This, yeah, Talking in Your Sleep. Talking in Your Sleep. Yeah, those were the two biggest hits they had. Talking in Your Sleep was their biggest hit. became the really? band's most successful single in the U.S., reaching number three on the Billboard Hot 100. Yeah, I thought what I like about you would have been more popular, but it was Talking in Your Sleep. They're I know, probably I know, trying to be edgy with having the romantics in there. It's a poster. And the, I didn't mention it, but... The whole time that Maddie is cleaning and in her bathrobe, that's the other thing that was inappropriate. She's in her bathrobe when he puts her in the bed and she's wearing pantyhose because you can see the reinforced toes. (laughs) And so apparently Andrea and Greg are playing a joke on them. They made up their faces to look like they're zombies or some shit. But Andrea looks like she has like latex. She does. On her face. Like, she I don't does. know where that came from. But I don't either. They try yeah. to make it look like they were killed by Todd. And it Greg, freaks out Karen and Artie. Greg comes out of the closet with, I guess, a prop hatchet and scares them. And we cut back to Maddie drinking wine again. And we cut to Andrea taking a shower, Karen. But she's not wearing her panties, is she? No, she's not. <laughs> she's completely nude. Washing the yeah. makeup off of her. And Terry is there. And we see... 
two bare breasts, Karen. Yeah, he's watching her. And we cut to Maddie, and she's calling the operator, verifying that Brad's number is working. She can't fucking walk two doors down. <laughs> I just kept saying, just <laughs> go down and see if he's there. <laughs> she's told it's a working number. And she keeps saying, this is a real emergency. A real emergency. <laughs> Then we cut to Greg and Andrea, and they're playing tennis in the middle of the night now. That's <laughs> weird. And I thought she was supposed to be some good tennis player or something because she mentioned it earlier, but she sucks. <laughs> She's not so good, no. No. She's like, how do you expect me to hit that back to you after he serves it? <laughs> so they play tennis. Terry watches. Greg hits the ball over the fence, and Andrea goes to retrieve it. Greg lies down on the court, and the he ball feel- rolls towards him. Yeah, he's... You were supposed to believe he's the tequila's getting to him because he says, I'm never drinking tequila again. And then Andrea comes back and says she couldn't find the ball. And he says, I got it right here. Cut again to Maddie talking to the operator, explaining to, to her that the operator, that the son ran away from a mental institution, even though she calls it a school at first. Yeah, she's telling her the whole story. Then we see Greg and Andrea having relations on a diving board, Karen. Yes, both, because he starts to naked. kiss her on the tennis court. And she says, not here. I have a better place. And they go to the pool. Why don't they go back to her apartment? <laughs> no, they have to go to the pool. On the diving board. Yes, which would not be comfortable. Well, they're lying. They have like sand on them so that you have grip when you're diving. Otherwise, you'd slip if it was just metal. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> not necessary. But it wouldn't be comfortable. And then Terry arrives with his machete and he slits Greg's throat and cuts Andrea's face with it. And we cut to Maddie and I wrote, she's having a breakdown. Yep, <laughs> she's losing it. Which I don't really get. Again, it, it just seemed ridiculous. She could have, yes, she could have had a breakdown if she had gone down to see her fiance was no longer with us. But she's just freaking out. Because Todd's coming, but she's, I don't know. It was just weird. Then we cut to Karen and Artie. And I wrote, Artie is in the friend zone. Yep. She friend zones him immediately. (laughs) (laughs) Says, will you talk to Terry? Then Terry grabs Karen's feet and scares them. He tells Artie, thanks for looking after my girl. Yeah. And tells him to go tell Greg and Andrea that they should not be outside while his brother is on the loose and tells Karen they should go back into his house apartment. Yes, where his mom is wigging out. I don't know where she was when they went back there. I don't either. So then we see Artie getting in his car and Todd is in the back seat and he tries to tell Artie that Terry is the killer. He, has a gun. To- he does. The doctor's gun. Then we cut to Terry and Andrea on the couch, and he's starting to undo her blouse, Karen. And I thought we were going to see Karen's breast there for a second, Karen. Nope. But the doorbell rings. It's Artie and Todd. Karen's left rebuttoning her blouse. Todd points the gun at Terry and then runs away. Yeah. It... Artie and Terry chase after him. And then Artie finds a machete with a bunch of other murder implements in a bag. On the boardwalk or whatever the hell it is they're walking Their on. Their nature walk is what they nature called walk, it. Whatever. Yeah. And then Todd stabs Artie in the neck with a grilling fork. He gone. And this is another time where Terry kind of licks the blood off the utensil that he used to kill someone and says, it's not cranberry sauce, is it? It's not cranberry it. sauce. He does lick it. Does he? More than once. I don't know if this time, but he's like, well, it sure isn't cranberry sauce. I don't know if that's supposed to be funny or what, but. Then we see Karen. She's out looking for them and calling for them. Why hasn't anyone called the police yet? Like somebody should have called the police and said, you know, Todd is supposed to be coming back here. We haven't seen the doctor. We haven't. I mean, no one. They just people are disappearing. Well, isn't it right here that Karen finds Terry with the bloody machete and Terry tells her that it was Todd and that he's out killing people. And this is when she said, we should call the police. Yes, finally. (laughs) She says, it's totally out of control. And I'm like, she's right. Call the police. And he says, yeah, let's call the police. They'll take care of it. And then he turns and swings the machete 
at Karen. He, he just gets her shoulder. Not even not here. He doesn't. He misses her oh. totally. He's not even close. It's not even like he's trying at this point. It's like, I love you. And he swings. Yes. It's the machete at her. She runs away. He's chasing her through the woods. And she hides in the storage closet. Well, she tries to get into one of the apartments through the sliding door, but she can't. And, you know, there's a storage closet right next to the patio. Yes. And I said, terrible music is playing right now. Terry arrives and he starts to open the door to the storage closet and stops. And we kind of see there's a body behind her, but she hasn't seen it yet. Yeah, I didn't really notice it. I saw it. So then Maddie is calling Brad again, and this time she calls the wrong number because someone answers. So then Karen finds the body of... Jackie. It's the assistant. Oh, Jackie. I was wondering who the hell that was. I yeah. recognized the patio because the masks, they were like African masks out there. So I knew that's where he had been killed, but I didn't realize that Terry had shoved him into the storage closet. That's why he starts to open the door to go get her, but then he just waits for her to run out because he's no he knows she's going to see it. She sees the body of Jackie, and then Terry waits for her outside with the body of Artie <laughs> on a lounge chair or some shit, right? Yeah. When she runs up there, I said, there's blood on that blanket that's on the chair. And I thought, oh, I wonder if that's a mistake. Like, you know, they just put the blanket back and it was bloody. But no, it's not because that's where the guy was killed before. Then Karen runs away and begins knocking on doors. She rings the door of the little girl who was looking for her kitty. Earlier. And that's where the <laughs> shadow work is. So she's running door to door and he's just walking and you see him walking along the with the wall and he's got his machete. So he's holding his machete as he's walking and it's mm -hmm. a shadow. So it looks like Go on. he's remember Prince at the Super Bowl. That's what it looks like. It's very phallic, I thought. Prince at the Super Bowl. Never mind. If you don't know, you. It <laughs> no, was a he was a, he was a silhouette. Okay, was it phallic? Yes, <laughs> that oh. was on purpose. I don't know if this was or not, but okay. he's obviously walking this, and the machete is held at the appropriate level. So I think it was probably meant to. Okay. So she rings the door, little girl who was looking for a kitty. Of course, she refuses to let her in because. Todd already told her not let anyone in, no matter what. So then Karen enters the apartment of the mom who has the baby, who Andrea was babysitting for earlier, in through the patio door, because, of course, it's unlocked. And, of course, Terry is in there with the body of the mom. And he pulls the machete from her chest, right? Don't see him kill her, but she gone. Yeah, which I was surprised by. And he must have stuck the machete back in there because he had it. So now he's stuck it back in so he can pull it out when Karen's there. It was weird. Yeah. And then we see Todd at the patio door. Karen runs into the bedroom and hides behind a dresser and tries to call for help. And the operator is not on answering. Her, on her princess phone. <laughs> Isn't that what that was called? Or was it a trim line or something like that? I think like that. that was a trim line. <laughs> okay. Trim line. Terry enters with a machete. And she whacks him right in the balls, Karen, with the phone. <laughs> well, that's a stupid hiding place. She can't really. I mean, he knows she went in there. No. It's just. But anyway, she does grab the baby and she runs. grabs the baby and runs out so that he can't kill the baby. And then we cut to Maddie back at the house and she finds a bloody Nike shirt in the garbage. Well, she's can. cleaning. She's cleaning out the refrigerator <laughs> now because, you know, she's cleaning and she sees something in the trash. I thought she was going to find Brad's hand in there so they could get a little more use out of that prop that was holding the beer and twitching. But no, it's a bloody shirt. It's Terry's bloody shirt. So then she finally goes to Brad's yes. office. <laughs> Religious radio talk show is still going on. They're talking about a neighbor and cutting an axe with an axe you can't shit. you can and fill yeah i knew it's you kind of karen no it says you can <laughs> fool your mother but you can't fool the lord yeah. and then it starts quoting a bunch of stuff that is paralleling what's happening talking about being with the neighbor and cutting with an axe something or other that's what i wrote <laughs> yeah i think it even talks about beheading him or something i don't know and then maddie discovers that brad is dead 
Well, first she's banging dramatically on the door and then, which is now closed. And then she just opens it, but she's banging for a long time. He doesn't turn around in his chair because obviously he's dead. And then she goes in, but he's, he's propped up like he's alive. Though. Right. I don't know yeah, how that she, happened. And then when how did he, he lift his stump up in his other hand? So that are like, he's, well, I think Terry did it. Oh, okay. Maybe he posed him. Yeah. I don't think I don't think he did yeah. it himself. No, Terry did it. Well, that makes sense. And then she touches him and he falls forward and his head splits open. So it's just another gore because his brain Not very splits. Good, no, but it's his brain splits in two. Not good at all. Actually. No, it's not. But That's probably the worst effect of the whole thing. So then we see Karen at the pool with the baby. Yeah, she's not running any. She runs at horrible places. She should have run. I don't know. There must have been other people home in the complex. It's Thanksgiving, for God's sakes. But whatever. She went to the pool. Harry enters. And it's an indoor pool. So like a pool house kind of thing. Yeah. Thing. Karen hides the baby in a cabinet in the bathroom. Orly. Because <laughs> the blanket's still hanging out of the door. And she opens the door to sauna and finds the naked bodies of Greg and Andrea. I was like, that's not a good hiding spot. Is he going to cook her in there? Because I thought she was going to hide in the sauna. No, but she hides in a bathroom stall. Which is horrible. <laughs> She's, oh, she's standing on the toilet so you can't see your feet. But he knew there, she but... went in there. <laughs> Where else is she going to be if she's not in the sauna? The door is closed. Oh, yes. Then we cut back to Maddie. and She's telling Brad he, she's going to make everything all right. And she takes his gun. So then Karen leaves the bathroom stall after Terry takes a piss or whatever. Yeah. And he jumps out, I guess, and cuts her arm with a machete. Yeah, I thought he missed her. But no, he gets her a little bit. She runs out and finds Todd with a gun, the doctor's gun, and she takes the gun from Todd as Terry is approaching because, I don't know, but she she will shoot him. (laughs) Terry says, you won't shoot me, and then Todd's holding the gun, and then Karen takes it, and she's like, like, I "I will, will. (laughs) and she tries. Apparently, the gun's not loaded. Click, click. Yep, nothing. I don't know why the doctor's out there with an unloaded gun. Then... Todd and Terry fall into the pool and begin fighting. I think they fight and then fall in the pool. Whatever. (laughs) Maddie arrives as Karen is pulling Todd from the pool. Maddie shoots Terry from across the pool. Good shot. Once. Shoots him in the chest once. But he's fine. He can still take a couple (laughs) steps toward the edge of the pool (laughs) deliberately. And then she shoots him again and again and again, right in the freaking head, apparently. She shoots him in the eyeball. And he falls into the pool. She's still in her pantyhose. <laughs> <laughs> so then Maddie hugs Todd. Karen takes the baby. Maddie keeps calling Todd Terry. Yeah, she's like, you're safe now. It's okay. I love Todd you. Is you're gone. safe. And, she, and Todd at first thinks... She knows who the bad guy was, right? She's holding Todd, telling him, it's okay, you're safe, everything's fine. It's just us again. It's just going to be us again. I love you. Yes, it's just going to be, which is, again, inappropriate. We don't need anybody else. I'm the only one. You're the only one I can be with forever. I don't need anyone else, just you. And it's like, this is bizarre. (laughs) And then she says something about, you know, it's just you and me, Terry, or something. And then- Todd starts screaming, I'm Todd. I'm Todd. I'm Todd. I'm Todd. And, then, and Maddie is distraught. And Todd because walks it's away. Todd. She's yelling it. He's yelling it. She's yelling, I'm Todd. I'm Todd. And he's yelling, I'm Todd. I'm Todd. Yep. He repeats over and over again, I'm Todd. Maddie puts the gun to her head and pulls the trigger. And I was kind of wondering, I should have counted how many shots she yeah. shot. <laughs> I thought that, that there weren't any left. I thought she but shot But apparently there's times. one left. Yep. And she gone. And I Karen, said she doesn't have enough bullets left, but she shoots herself. And Karen takes the baby and runs out. Yeah, and you hear police cars in the distance, and that's the end. The end. Credits. We had better endings. All right, Karen, anything we learned today? What did we learn? We learned about the romantics. Yep. We learned about the house that cried murder a tiny bit. The radial artery. 
why there's no Q or Z on the rotary phone. That's pretty much it. Oh, and about the beer. What was the old beer? style beer? Old style beer. Okay. I mean, as we said at the beginning, I think it's typical 80s slasher movie. As your reviewer said, probably on the lower level. But yeah, it's not a good one. Pretty much what you would expect. All right. Next film, I believe, is your choice, Karen. Is it? Is it not? It's my choice. And what film have you chosen for us? I'm sure it's a gem. Well, you threw down the gauntlet with this one. So I'm going to see if I can be even worse (laughs) with mine. Is that what we're doing now? Yeah. Well, I'm trying as Thanksgiving movies go. I'm going for a five. I think. Okay. I don't know because I've never seen this movie, but it's from 2007 and it's called Thanks Killing. Chosen only to go with Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Okay. Yes. Because I you think have... this comes out the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, correct? It does. Big party night, Wednesday before Thanksgiving. <laughs> well, that's when everybody comes into town and goes to the bar. So, yeah, so they, can they don't have family. to go deal with their family. It is a big party night. Do you have a cocktail for that party night, Karen? I do. I have a stunning fall cocktail. Stunning. All right. It's cozy and creamy. With pumpkin pie spice and a crunchy graham cracker rim. Okay. And what would that be, Karen? It's a pumpkin martini. What are we going to need for that? Two ounces of vodka, half an ounce of heavy cream, half an ounce, up to an ounce of pure maple syrup, two tablespoons of canned pumpkin puree, a quarter teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice, a quarter teaspoon of vanilla extract, and graham crackers crushed for your rim. It is a lot of ingredients, but most people will have these ingredients around Thanksgiving if they're making any, if they're making pumpkin pie, which is the reason I chose this drink. Yes, most people would. <laughs> so you could sneak out a couple tablespoons of pumpkin puree if somebody's it's making not a pie. pumpkin pie filling. It's pumpkin puree. It's different. Yes, there's there are cans that are pumpkin pie filling and there are cans that are pumpkin puree. The only difference is the spice. So you could use pumpkin pie filling and just not add the spice. Okay. Sounds tasty to me. I'm sure the cocktails would be very good. You can probably put whipped cream even on top of it. Well, that's what it's, you can make it a pumpkin pie martini by putting whipped cream on it. That's just what it said. I'll look forward to that pumpkin martini. Yeah, we might need a couple of them. This only makes one. So if you want to double it. I hope it's funny. Like, so bad it's funny. We'll see. Yep, we shall. It's got to be better than Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. I don't know. I think it's probably, I'm guessing it's pretty close. But we'll see. All right. I liked Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. I think it's funny. All right. Anyone you need to thank this week, Karen? Well, I'm going to thank our listener. There's a lot of podcasts out there. Thank you for spending time with us. What about you, Greg? Who do you got? I'm going to thank the band Verse 13 for providing all of the music in this Gary Spirits podcast. The music definitely makes the podcast better. Anything else, Karen? Please drink responsibly. Yes. And happy Thanksgiving. That's next week. Well, let me the be the first to wish <laughs> you all a happy Thanksgiving then. <laughs> you will be. Hey, it's Karen, and I'm here to talk to you about getting social with us. Did you know you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Scary Spirits Podcast? Or check out our website, scaryspirits.com. If you have something to say, email us at info at scaryspirits.com. And as always, thanks so much for listening. Please drink responsibly. <laughs>